Welcome to the second part of chapter three. Welcome to the objectives and the goals. Now this, for the people doing the practical exercise, this is one of the make or break moments for you in the semester. Setting your objectives and setting your goals will determine how well you do on your assignments, all of your assignments. So you want to get this, get it right. You also want to not be stressed over it because it's doable and there's a whole bunch of preset objectives you can work with. So, here's what you need to be able to do. First and foremost, if you've done any marketing in the past, you'll come across the SMART mantra. Specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, timetabled. Why you want SMART objectives is that for the purpose of any operation, if you can say what it is you're trying to achieve, and you know that you can measure it, so you know you've achieved it, and you know how you're going to do it, you are three quarters of the way to getting it done, because now it's something you know that's achievable, doable, when it's got to be done. It's realistic because it's achievable, because it's actionable, because it's measurable, because it's specific. And then you can put a timetable on it and go, all right, by this date, have it. Has it been done? Yes, no. So this is why SMART's important. And it's why when we're drilling through, and this is an area where I'm really happy to work with you and do feedback and a lot of backwards and forwards discussions, is specific, measurable, actionable. These are the uh, component parts that you don't get right first time. The reason we workshop things like this is so we can clarify. So when you say, what you want to do, if it makes sense to somebody else, you part the way there to it being specific. Now, you're going to be asked to do a bunch of things this semester in terms of from a practical point of view. Here's a set of objectives that were prepared earlier. And these are objectives that are in chapter three. And you can use one of these objectives. You can go and set out to run a social media account that fits one of these six objectives. In fact, for e-marketing on a regular basis, information dissemination is the priority of a social, marketing, a social media marketing account. You go and say, here's what we want to do. We want to have an account for the e-marketing subject. I want to run a Twitter account and I will pass information on to my students from that account. I will make it specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and timetable of Create and run a Twitter account that is followed by students in the course who are using Twitter. That I can do that by going and getting a list of your accounts and seeing if you're following me. Follow them back, answer the questions. Bang. Do it in 13 weeks, do it in 15 weeks from week 1 to week 13. Timetabling. At least once a week, check in on the site, conclude by week 15. Realistic, well, I can open the account during class and see what you had to ask. So it's doable. That's the thing. Objectives should be doable. What you want to do with a generic objective is that you also want to give it a bit of personalization. So take a packet mix, shine it up a bit. What you also want to be thinking about in the longer term for this semester, profit probably means scoring points or doing things quicker and faster. But profitability and objectives are go hand in hand. You want to be able to point to how achieving this particular objective gave you a better return than doing nothing at all. So it's one of the things with social media is if your objective is to become famous, then that's a fair objective. You can set up a smart objective around it. If your social media account doesn't result in you doing that any more than sitting at home and doing nothing would, you didn't turn a profit on your objective. You didn't turn, you didn't get a return on your time invested. So things that you're going to need to be able to do, I want you to be able to speak segmentation. Again, this is one of those things I'm always very keen on students being able to do. Largely because a lot of the strategies that you've seen in the other presentation are absolutely dependent on segmentation and objectives are absolutely, they live or die on good segmentation. So 
So good segments, clear segments, so you can be specific, you can tell me about the product, who they are, where you're going to access them, what are you going to offer them. So describe, identify, select and tailor. That's what you want to be able to do. You want some of the stuff you're not going to be necessarily writing down in an assignment task. For me, you're going to be making these decisions. And these decisions will be influential and show me that you're thinking this through. So, any objective has to describe an audience. There's a whole bunch of different ways to describe the audience. On screen are three of the uh, most common ways. For you, one of the things that you are very much going to possibly run afoul is the internet experience. Does your audience know enough about the internet to be able to do what you want them to do? If they do, perfect. If they don't, you're going to have to teach them behaviours before you get them to use your product. The audience match, uh, the other thing is basically what you're looking for here is this is value and value co-production, is it of value to them? Also, demography variables are still useful in terms of technology. There's no point creating an app for iPhone if all your target users are on Android. So know some of the target demo demographics. What we've got in chapter three is we've got a framework called the audience market fit and you want to be using this. So you have objectives and this is the key. You have an objective, you want to achieve that objective, but you also want to make certain that on the way to meeting the needs of your audience, you don't break your objectives. Audience dominated and customer dominated is not a marketing approach. So what your strategy up and um, your game plan here, what you need to do is you need to select your segments, who you're going to address. Now I'm giving you the caveat here that you can go for the most interesting segment. That doesn't necessarily mean the most profitable or the easiest to access. The segment that you think is going to give you the best return. They could be a less profitable segment, but one that's going to create more spin-offs, more co-production, more co-creation. They could be a less active investment, but a safer segment. You could be going for the power user who's likely to break it and want to do new things, or you could be going for the buy it, put it in the cupboard, and never really use it, but we've still made a sale to them. User. Pick your, pick your segment you want to work with. Modify your product. Modify your marketing mix. Tweak the mix to meet the audience. Now, since you're going to be running social media accounts this semester, each and every post, every photo you put up on Instagram, every post you make on Facebook or Tumblr or every video you put up on YouTube, every tweet you send out, the marketing mix is there. What is it in terms of a product? Or what is it of value to the audience? What does it cost the audience to engage? Time, effort, energy. How are they going to get to it? Distribution. And how do they know it's there to be got? Or are they going to share it? So marketing mix, it's in play all the way through. Everything you're doing here, you want to be getting it down so it's so routine that as you are crafting a message for your account, you're not consciously going price, product, promotion, place. You are doing it as a, whilst I make this, yeah, this is why I'm doing this. This makes sense to my game plan. All right. Now we get down to some of the good stuff, some of the technical things. Positioning. You're going to need a positioning statement. You're going to need to know where do you fit in the greater scheme of things. Are you going on to Vine to be the next Thomas Sanders? Are you going on to YouTube to do Let's Play videos? Are you going on to YouTube to do instructional videos? Are you going on to YouTube because you've got a great band and you do uh, live acts? All of these things require you then to go, who would I expect to see in the next video? Who would I expect to see in the previous video? Who would I expect to see either side of me? Where do I want? To? If they follow my account, who else's account would I think they should be following? 
Who else is account are they likely to be following? Where do we fit? How do we cross over and collaborate? How do we build off each other? How do we work together? Because positioning in e-marketing is a lot more about where is the community I can engage with than how do I separate myself from the pack. And that is your strategy, your short, fast strategy, objectives, game plan underway. As always, questions and contact if you need me. But absolutely critical to this is have your objectives workshop. Bring your objectives to people. Spell them out, talk them through, explain them, and be willing to make changes and modify based on the explanation. Because the smart objectives are going to help make your semester so much more attainable, so much more fun, and you'll do better for having used them. So they're a practical part, they're a practical element, they're coursework, and they're there so it's easier for you to do better. It's the sole reason I'm asking you to do this is I want you to achieve and do more, achieve more with less effort.